Hi, I'm Mark from LM Small Engine. Today we're going to tear apart this 8 horsepower Tecumseh. Um, it originally was on this snow blower here and there's a tight spot on each revolution. In fact, it broke off all half the gears on the starter, electric starter. So we're going to tear it apart and see if it's worth fixing. So hope you enjoy the video. Okay, we'll start by taking off all the pulleys and stuff. We're going to take this back cover off here. To see you know the piston rod and the crank and everything in there but we'll take all these pulleys off and we'll take the shrouding off and the gas tank and stuff so well that thing is stuck on there i'll have to spray some lube on that to break it loose and this here this runs off the camshaft that's for like reverse and stuff because this will spin this way and this spins the opposite way. That's for like the reverse and stuff. So let me get some lube on that. Spray that, let it soak for a little bit here. Well, that's soaking. We'll go ahead and get the gas tank and the shroud off and everything. In that tight spot on each revolution, that's without a spark plug, so it's not the compression. In case someone thinks the compression is high on it or something that's that's without the spark plug in it that's what it did to the starter and they wanted me to put a new starter on it well you put a new starter on it but it's gonna break all the teeth off of it anyway so take that cover off these are good old engines these old tecumseys for snow blowers and stuff but they quit making them and it's really hard to get parts for these two because I looked for an overall kit for this through Tecumseh and it's discontinued. And the like stands and prime line, all them, they have overall kits, but they have them for 10 horses, not 8 horses. But I never really thoroughly checked. So I'm sure someone out there still has an overall kit for these. Yeah, we gotta take this plate off here. Just checking this coil out. Sometimes this coil might might rub on it, but it's not. But see, there's there's a point where it sticks. Like I said, that's not a spark plug, so we can't can't blame compression on that. It's right in that spot right there. So hopefully it's a easy fix, hopefully. Now we gotta undo our governor there, then we can take this back plate off. We still gotta take that off. Let me soak it one more time and We'll come back to it in a few minutes. You know, the more and more I look at that, that, that might be part of the crank. Let's go ahead and pop that plate off. Get another cup for these bolts so we don't get all the bolts mixed up. Make sure everything, all the bolts are out. Yeah, it's sliding up over that, so that must be part of the crank. I thought it might have been some kind of a adapter the way it's shaped. I was wrong. There we go. It's coming off now. Well, the governor, governor looks good. It has both weights on it and everything. Don't see no broken parts laying in there anywhere. Let me grab a vice grip and turn it so both these dots on the cam and the crank line up and I can slide this cam out. Yeah, I thought for sure the way that was made that was like a slide on the crank, but I was wrong. So there's a dot dot on the crank gear and there's a slash on the cam gear. That's how you time these. There we go. The decompression, like it's all there too. The springs attached and everything. So the cam looks good. Still binding up right in there. So I think next we'll pop the head off and we'll 
take the piston rod out. Maybe that something's wore out on where the piston rod goes in the crank. Maybe the, we'll go ahead and take the head off next. Okay, in order to get the head off, we're gonna take the muffler off. And there's two little tabs that are bent over so the bolts don't vibrate loose. So we'll bend them back over. There we go. And the top one's a three eighths and them two are half inch. Okay, let's pop the head off now. Where am I going to tight? You're going to have to use the air ratchet on them. It's going to be a little bit noisier, but we'll get them off. That's what happened. I don't know if you can see that there. One of the teeth from the starter got sucked into the carburetor somehow. Because he can see where it's banging around right there. I'll be a son of a gun. It don't lock up or nothing now. Now that is amazing. How one of them starter teeth. How would it do that? Because that's all covered up. How would it? Not just one of them things. It's probably like one, one in a million things that would happen. This is not. It don't stick no more now. That is crazy. How one of them starter teeth did that. Well, that, that's going to be a simple fix. All I need to do is find the head gasket for that and that side pan gasket. Heck, we can get this thing put back together again, put it back in that snowblower, and then go snowblowing. All right, well, let me go find a head gasket and a pan gasket for this. Okay, I found the, the side pan gasket, and I found the head gasket for it, and I used my little scraper, and I scraped all the big chunks of gasket off. Now I'm going to use a wire brush, clean the rest of it off. Makes it all nice and clean. This is what I use for a scraper. This is a cheap and expensive one. You get the bulk of the gasket off. And we'll do the same to the pan here. Okay, and we'll do the head here. Okay, now we'll do the top here. Now the piston all the way up. Yeah, if I was a smart man, I probably should have took the head off first. But it sounded like it was internal. It really did. Yeah, we'll clean it off real good and we'll blow out the inside of the motor. Make sure there ain't no debris in there. Okay, we'll do the inside of the motor first here. That side pan gasket for this particular company is a 37-34-2. They come in like packs of 10 that I get them in. These are leftovers because I don't really work on too many Tecumseys anymore. And this goes on them pins. Just like so. Now we need to put our push rods in. Now our cam. And we have to be careful on this. Because that bottom push rod is right on the edge. And it has to go in like this because it won't go down this way. And we do that, it's going to be a little bit off. So we'll just have to lift it up a little bit. I'll take this back off so I don't ruin it. So we'll find our notch here. I'll grab a clean paper towel. So there's a little notch right here. It's by that big hole. And there's a dot on that crank. So we're just going to lift this up a little bit. We just got to get that dot on the crank. And that line on the... We just got to be careful of that, that spring on that decompression. 
And there we go. You don't want to break that spring off that decompression. Let's see how that dot, that line, line up now. If you don't line them two up, it's not going to run. It won't be timed right. There's the dot, and there's that line with that big hole right there. Then we got the push rods in. Put our pan gasket on. And when we put this on, it's going to go on so far, then we have to be careful on this plastic gear. So it will slide down in there. You don't want to break that plastic gear. That's for your governor. And just kind of rotate the fly a little bit till that governor gear lines up in there so you don't break one of them teeth off that governor gear. Now we can go ahead and bolt that down. The long one goes here. Okay, that part's done. I'm going to blow some air around that there because some of that debris might have gotten that top of that piston on top of that top ring. So I'm going to blow that out real quick. See all that debris that came out of there? Okay, see which way this goes. A little holes line up there. And these two gold ones went up front here. And all the rest are the same, so you can put them in all the holes. We'll tighten these down, and we're going to torque them. We're going to torque these. We'll snug them down first. I got to go look in the book. I can't remember what it comes to. It's been so long. But now look at it. No hang up whatsoever. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know why I didn't take the head off first. It just it sure sounded like it was inside. Let me go read up and see what the torque is on that and I'll be right back. Okay, I went to the manual. It says 200 inch pounds. So we'll start out about 120, 130. We'll do it once over that way. And we'll go to 200. Kind of zigzag. Okay, then we'll set the 200 and do the same thing. Alrighty. Now let's go ahead and put that top plate on and the muffler back on. I'm going to stick a plug in there so we don't get no debris in there. One of them J19LMs. Gap at about 33 to 35. Okay, let's put that governor, governor assembly back on. Just gently tap it back on that shaft. We shouldn't have to readjust it because we took it off the same exact way. It's going the same way as we took it off, so the adjustment should be right there. But if you need to adjust it, you turn this little torque head screw here. And we'll put our shroud back on. Make sure the primer hose ain't pinched up in there or anything. I'm still going to tear this carburetor apart and put a kit in it because they said it was leaking gas too, as you can see. So let me get these bolts here started. Here, the shorter one too with the flanges on it. That holds a 
gas tank support on so we use these two you know it's opposite the ones with the flanges we put on here then the other two hold that gas tank break bracket on Lose it up so them two holes right there line up. Look our fuel line back up. Oh no, I can't do that right now because I need to put a new starter on there. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get this governor. I have to take that bracket back off and get this put on there first. What happens when they start rushing? I guess. Take your time. I'm trying to get ahead of myself here. Oh, there we go. Okay. I went between the block and the shroud that time. There we go. Okay, now this has to be up. That will fall down. That has to be up. Let me grab a pair of needle nose. Because when it's in the up position that's when the springs springs and everything will work and it came out of that not this one but that second one there there we go make sure everything's working properly for you finish tightening it up okay now i'm gonna add the oil before i forget but Pretty much all snow, all, anything that runs in the wintertime, you use a 1030, 1030 oil in it. You never want to use a 30 weight in the wintertime. So I'm going to do that right now before I get too carried away. Then I'm going to go go upstairs and find the starter for it. Or, well, the starter shop because it was grinding to well, find a starter. So I'll be right back. Okay, clean the carburetor up on this. I put a new bowl on it. There was like a little rust hole in the bottom of the bowl. That's why it was leaking gas. So we'll hook up our kill wire. Okay. So I'm ready to go back on the snowblower. I'm not going to put the pulleys back on until we get the motor mounted on the snowblower. That's a lot easier putting the belts on and putting the pulleys on then. Okay, let's get it one, at least one bolt started and we'll jack it up here a little bit so we can get the other. Some snowblowers have the bolts going to the bottom and they put nuts on top and these here self-tapping bolts. Okay, we got all them tight. Now we can put our bottom cover on. And these are three eighths. There's six of them. Okay, now we gotta do is put the pulleys on, the belts on, and put that cover on. And we'll try starting it. I put our key in all right almost done with this okay i got off the table and put a little bit of premium gas in there real quick grab the extension cord see if we can't get this thing started okay let's prime it put the choke on <laughs> Well, there you go. It's crazy how that starter gear ended up in the sill, you know, on top of the piston. Many ways it runs good again. They can go snow blowing. So thanks for watching the video. If you like my videos, please press the like button and please subscribe. Anyways, have a good day. Bye.